Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. I'm so excited about today's video. I'm going to show you my secret sauce for creating faux chenille letters. I think these turned out so cute. I added some to a bag. You can do it with letters or you can do it with a, a felt back. You can do it whatever you like. I use a glitter faux leather on these and then my secret sauce for the chenille. Now, I must tell you, I started with the collegiate font from Creative Appliques. I'll link it in the description below. And my secret sauce, are you ready for it? You're not going to guess what it is. It is microfiber towels. I have been wanting to do faux chenille for so long. And I tried a couple different methods that I'd seen online, but they just either were a lot of work or they just didn't quite look authentic. But I thought these turned out, I don't know how well you can see, see that. These turned out really well and they really do look like chenille letters. So super cute. I've done all kinds of colors. Again, it's limited to the color of towels that you find. I will link the ones that I got in the description below, but you can see all these different letters. And again, you can do shapes as well. This is such an easy method of making these faux chenille letters. They're popular for varsity jackets. They're popular on the bags. They're popular for uh, book bags. You could put them on a backpack. Patches are becoming so popular. So I wanted to create this again. I wanted to do um, something for Evie as always. <laughs> She's got lots of things with her name on it. So I just added a little heat and bond ultra on the back of these and ironed it right on this bag that I made. Super easy, super cute. So I'm going to walk you through what I did in Embrilliance. You don't have to have Embrilliance to do this. You can do it right from the font to your machine. That's perfectly fine, but I'm going to show you a couple steps that I took in Embrilliance that's going to make it a little bit easier. I'm also going to cut the letters with the Cricut, but you don't have to do that either. You can skip through that part if you don't have a Cricut or your Scan and Cut or a Silhouette to cut your letters. You can just cut them by hand just like you do regular applique. I'll show you that in the video as well. So get a drink, sit back, and let's make some chenille letters. Let's get started. So I have my iron heating up. I have my microfiber cut into some three by three inch squares. I just took the microfiber towels, cut off a three inch strip and cut them into squares to match the size of the letter. So I've got a whole pile of them here. This is a messy project. I highly recommend you have a hand vac. I love this one for the desktop. It is a USB chargeable. It lasts for a long time. You just put your finger on it, hold it. It'll charge up and turn on and then you can keep all this fuzz under control. This is also great for your applique as you're um, sewing. You can get right in under there and clean up any little threads or remaining fuzzy pieces when you're cutting your applique and putting it back in the hoop. So I keep this on hand all the time. I love this so much. I will link it in the description below. Again, it's just rechargeable. You just open this. Take this out and empty it just like that. Put it back in and it closes just with a turn. So we're going to use heat and bond light for this project. This is a sewable iron on adhesive. You don't want the one that's in the red package. You can buy it like this. It also comes in a, like a five yard roll. I think it is. And then you can also buy it off the bolt. I just keep, have a lot of these on hand. So I just keep these smaller packages just for ease of storage. But it comes just like this. It's a big sheet. You're gonna cut off a piece to accommodate what you need. So I just cut off this little piece. I'm gonna set this down on my ironing surface. I'm gonna apply, if there's a side that looks better than the other that you want to be the outside, you wanna put the back side against the rough side of the heat and bond light. There's a paper side. That's going to go down and you're going to put your fabric on the rough side. The rough side is the adhesive side. So I'm just going to apply a couple of these on here. All right. And then I'm going to use some scissors and get rid of the excess. 
You might want to cover your ironing surface with a piece of cloth or something just to save it from getting any adhesive on it. I'm going to put that down. I'm going to flip this over. And we're just going to iron this adhesive into place on the paper side. High heat. I like to use a little steam. You have to read your instructions. I don't know if this one calls for steam, but I always do it. Um, this says no steam. Two seconds. So you're just melting that adhesive. Now the important part when you're doing this is to let it cool before you peel this back. If you peel it too early, the adhesive is going to peel right off. Now, if you're not cutting this with a die cutting machine, you don't necessarily have to put the heat and bond on the back. You don't even have to put it on it to use the cutting machine, but I just find that it helps it not stretch. And I use it whether I'm cutting it with the Cricut or not. So I'm gonna show you both ways, cutting it with the Cricut and hand cutting it. But again, I would recommend putting the heat and bond light on it, but it's not absolutely necessary whether you use the Cricut or not. All right, this is cooled down. So now I can peel this away. And you can see this adhesive has stuck to it. I can just easily pull these apart. And now these are ready to be used for applique. So like, like I said, I'm gonna do one not cut on the Cricut. I'll hand cut it and then I'll do the rest, cut them on the Cricut. So when I put these on my Cricut mat, I'm going to put it adhesive side down. While we're over here, I'm gonna take my faux leather and I'm also going to cut this into three by three inch squares. I've already cut a three inch strip. So I'm just gonna cut it into three by three inch squares. That gives me plenty of wiggle room. Make sure that I have enough. That one's good. All right, let's put these on the Cricut. So here we are in in brilliance. Now you can do this without going into the software. You can use the font the same way that you use any imported font with your machine and just do it right out of the box like that. But I found a couple little tweaks that if you have the software, I uh, believe you just need in brilliance essentials, you'll be able to do a little bit more that makes this process just a little bit easier. But again, you don't have to have this. You could just use the applique font, however you normally manipulate your fonts. So what I'm gonna do in, in Brilliance Essentials is click on this text tool. And of course it puts the ABC up here. That's the sample text. So the first thing I'm gonna do is highlight that and I'm gonna type in EV and I'm gonna tab down. And then I have installed the Creative Applique Collegiate font. And there are two different collegiate fonts. There's one with a bean stitch and there's one with a satin stitch. I'm going to use the satin stitch. You can use whichever one you want. So I'm going to click the collegiate two inch right here and it comes in really big. So let's zoom down a little bit. And that looks great. It looks like I lost my words. So again, I'm going to type Evie and click enter. So we've got that back. Now, when you click on the color tab, you can see that each of these letters comes in three steps. You have your position, which is the black step. You have the gray, which is the tack down, and you have the blue, which is your finishing stitch or the satin stitch in this case. So what I'm going to do, because I'm going to be cutting this on the Cricut, I need to get myself an SVG. But before I go any further, I just wanna make sure that this is going to fit in my five and a half inch hoop, which is the one I have selected. So I'm going to move these letters individually, just like so. Just like that and like that. And that leaves me plenty of room around each letter. You wanna make sure that you have room around each letter to leave that gold little outline all the way around so you need to have a, you don't want to butt it up right next to each other so i'm just going to do it like this so i have all of my letters situated so the next thing i need to do and this step is only necessary if you're going to be cutting your letters out with a digital die cutting machine if you're not going to use a digital die cutting machine like a scan and cut or a cricut or a silhouette cameo you don't have to do this part you can totally skip it but 
what I want to do is cut this out with my Cricut. So I'm going to click on the black position stitch, the very first one. And usually when it opens, this thread menu opens up where you can choose different colors. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to go over to the applique button and I'm going to inflate this by one. So it's 1.6 millimeters and I'm just going to click OK. Now I'm going to go down to the next letter, the same stitch, the black. I'm going to tell that that it's a position stitch and I'm going to click OK. Go down to the black one. Again, position stitch. All the black ones are position stitches. And this is my last one. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to tell it it's also a position stitch. Now that I have all of them chosen at a position stitch, the inflate is 1.6 for each one of them. I'm going to tell this to save all, and that's going to save an SVG of all of the letters, which I can use in my Cricut Scan and Cut or Silhouette Cameo. So I'm going to click Save All. I can name it here, and I'm going to name this Evie Chenille, just so that I remember what it is. And I'm going to click Save. I'm just putting that on my desktop for right now. You're going to get this menu. DPI is going to be at 72. That's perfectly fine. Just click OK. All right. So what I like to do, and again, you don't have to do this step. This just makes things a little bit easier. So I'm going to click Utility, Color Sort. This is a part of In Brilliance Essentials. It tells me right here, this design page has been reduced by nine color changes. So instead of doing each letter and from start to finish, it's going to do all the position stitches, all the tack down stitches, and then all the finishing stitches at once. So that's just going to save me time. So I'm going to click new view. So that opens another window and it's got that new view. So if we look over here at our stitch sim simulator, you can see it's going to do all, all those placements, tack down, and then all the finishing stitches at once. So that way we're not stopping in between, but I'm going to take this one step further. So you can stop right here if you want your color sorted and you could go straight to the machine. However, I don't want to waste any of this material. So I'm also going to apply this in little pieces instead of putting this down on the hoop and then doing my applique on top of it. I'm going to position just a small piece of this as well. So I want to get a position stitch for that as well. As you can see, this letter has the outside layer. So I need to know, you know, I just want to put a little square of the gold on top of it. And then we've got the chenille layer. So that'll go on top of that. So I need another position stitch. This will make sense when we get to the machine. So I'm going to click on this position stitch layer, this very first one, and I am going to go up to edit copy and then I'm going to go edit paste. So you can see I've got a, another position stitch right here. So what I want to do is move that up here into right under the first one. So this step number two is my second placement stitch. So I'm going to change that to a different color just so that it reminds me to stop again. It doesn't matter what color. All right, so let's take a look at what we have when we look at the stitch simulator. So we've got the placement. We're going to put our gold fabric down. It's going to stop. We're going to put our gold fabric down and then it's going to give us another placement. We're going to put our chenille down and then we're going to do all our finishing stitches. And that's what makes this a lot easier. Again, you don't have to do this part. So let's send this over to, if you have a brother machine that has Wi-Fi, I just learned this from Borica Sewing. I will link her in the description below. I didn't know you could do this. Um, Jeanette, if you're not following her, you should follow her. Um, you go to utility, send to Solaris. I don't have a Solaris. I have a PR1055X, but this works just fine. And I'm going to call this Evie Chenille. Whoops again and I'm just going to click OK. It really doesn't matter what you name it. The name doesn't transfer to the machine. It's going to come up with an error code. See? But when we get over to the machine, it's going to be there. So that's kind of neat. If you don't have that, then you want to go to File, Save Stitch File, or if you think that you might want to edit this, save your stitch and working file, and you're going to save it in the format that you need and to your flash drive. So. Now we're going to hop over to Cricut Design Space. So let me open that up. 
Here we are in Cricut Design Space. We're going to click New Project. And we're going to click Upload. Upload Image. Browse. And I'm looking for that Evie Chenille SVG that we just made. We're going to click OK. There it is. We can name it again if we want. We can add some keywords if we want. I'm not likely going to use this again, so I'm just going to click on it. Click Add to Canvas. Now we look over here in the menu bar. We have four different letters. One thing I want to do, I'm going to right click and hit ungroup. Everything looks great. I'm just going to leave it as one color. I will tell you if you have something like a letter A that has a counter in it, you might want to select the entire letter, right click and click attach. And that will keep the center of the A like this. It'll keep that cut for the center in there. But I don't have any counter um, holes in these particular letters, so I don't have to do that. So just check your layers panel. And if your A is in two different pieces, select both pieces and click attach. That will keep them together. So we're going to click make it. We're going to do it on a mat. We're going to click continue. And what I like to do is just put every letter in a different corner. So I'm going to do E, V, I, and E just like that. You, if you want, you can change colors and change mats every time, but it's really not necessary since we're just working with small pieces. So we're going to click continue. So here you need to choose your materials. If you don't see the material that you want to use, click browse all materials. Then you can type right up here. You can also just choose like fabric and see what most likely matches. Now I want to use the rotary blade. If you have a Cricut Explorer, you can try this with the straight blade um, and choose the cotton bonded a setting. I like to just use the cotton setting. I think you get much smoother cuts on the fabric with the rotary blade. So that's what I'm going to choose. Cotton. I've got the rotary blade. All I have to do is load up my mat and insert it into the Cricut. So I'm at the Cricut. I am just going to go ahead and load this. You can see I put my fabric in the four different corners. If I wanted to do different colors, I would just put a different color in each corner of the mat machine doesn't know that it's not all one color or if it is got my rotary blade in again if you're using the Cricut Explore you can use the bonded fabric blade and see how that works for you all right when it's all done we're going to hit eject and you can see just like that how nicely it cut out these letters. So there's the E. So that's going to save me time over at the machine cutting the letters. Again, you don't have to cut the letters out. You can do it just like you do regular applique and trim it. I'll insert a picture of that when we get to that step. And again, this is a really fuzzy process, so this comes in handy. I've got fuzz all over here. I can... So we're back over at the machine. This is the PR1055X. I'll do another one on the Recoma. But this is the setup. I went ahead and switched to my 7.25. It was just a little close to the edge and I didn't want to um, have to worry about it. Plus I think it'll be easier to see what I'm doing. So I've gone ahead and clicked this button and inserted a stop after every step. I just like to do it that way. Technically I don't need one before that last step. It can go right into the satin, but I just like to do that so that I can keep track and makes me stop and look at the machine. So I'm gonna click okay. Everything's set up the way I want it. I've got plenty of room around each letter. That looks good. So I'm gonna click embroidery. Now I need to change my colors. I'm just gonna click close here. For your first placement stitch, I suggest that you, or recommend that you do that in black. So that's already chosen. Your second placement stitch, I also suggest you use black or a color that's contrasting to whatever your faux leather layer is going to be so that you can see it. So I'm gonna do layer two also in black. Your third layer is going to be tacking down that, um, the chenille. So 
I like to go also do that in a dark color so that I can see if I need to make any adjustments. If it perhaps the Cricut didn't cut it real well. Um, if you're going to be trimming it by hand, you also want to do that in a dark color. So I'm going to do step three also in black. And then the last step is your finishing stitch. So I'm going to do that in white. Um, you can do whatever you want, but for mine, the way that I made the other ones, I'm going to do that in white. So I'm going to click OK. So we are good to go. First thing we're going to do is run that first placement stitch. All right, so we've got all our placement stitches. I highly recommend taking it off the hoop and going back to your work, sur work surface. <laughs> So I'm back over here at my work surface. What I'm gonna do is take one of my little squares. I'm gonna spray it with some 505 temporary adhesive on the back side, off camera. And then I'm gonna center that right over the E, making sure that I've got room on all four sides. I'm gonna do that for all four pieces. Obviously you could just put one big piece on here if you wanted, depending how close your letters are. I was just trying to save material. All right, we're going to go back to the machine. Now, if you didn't add the second position stitch in the software, then you would just rerun step number one so that you get the exact same placement stitch again. All right, so we've got our second position stitch. We're going to go back to our work surface. So if you didn't use the Cricut to pre-cut your shape or your letter, in this case, I'm using a heart instead of a letter. You would do your placement stitch on your vinyl and then place your fabric. Go back to the machine, let it do the tack down. So you can see it's done the tack down. Now I'm just going to go in with scissors and cut as close to that as I can before we run the satin. And now let's go back to the pre-cut letters. So what we got to do now is essentially the same thing we just did, only this time we're going to put spray adhesive and we're going to line this letter up right over our outline. So I'm going to spray it again with some adhesive in the back. We're going to line it up with those letters, making sure that we cover up those stitches. You see any fluffs or anything that you need to get rid of, use your hand back or make sure that you clean it up before you put it on. Again, you can trim it up. You too. Use your vacuum. All right, once you've got all of your letters into place, you're going to go back to the machine. All right, we're going to run the tack down and then it's going to stop. Okay, so this is why I suggest that you do this stitch in a dark color because now I can look and see if I didn't get those letters lined up just right and there's too much sticking out side of that tack down stitch. I can go ahead and trim that up a little bit so that it's not in danger of sticking outside of my satin stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and trim up a couple of these, just like that side of the eye. There's a little bit extra hanging out there. I'm afraid that'll show. So I'm going to trim that and maybe this little spot on the E. So you can see I've got that trimmed up pretty close to those stitches all the way around. That will make sure that they're not sticking outside of the satin. You can see how often I used this to go back and get those pieces out. All right, so we're running that satin stitch. We're just going to let this finish all of the letters and then we can take it out of the hoop. So here's our finished letters. All that's left to do is you can remove your tear away if you want. If you're going to be adding some heat and bond ultra hold, I would remove this tear away so that it's actually sticking to the vinyl, not this um, paper. If you're going to make them on into iron on patches if you're going to sew them on i would still probably add the heat and bond ultra but you're just going to cut right outside the borders i like to kind of start by getting the outside established and then i'll work on the inside and you can get as detailed as you want
And there's your finished letter. Super cute. It looks so much like a chenille. This is a four inch letter that I did. These are all three inch. Here is the heart. So here are some of the letters that I did. This one, I used this different gold for the background. And I did the word, the word glam, G-L-A-M. And I, you can see I did it in all different colors. These are some, the ones we just did. Here is the heart. I did this one on a white felt instead. So let's see how that looks. So super cute and really easy to do. So I'm gonna add some ultra heat and bond on the back and then use these to iron on some projects. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I will link everything I used in the description below, including the collegiate font from Creative Applique. It was perfect for these varsity looking letters and all of the products used. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to click that bell so that you're notified every time there's a new video. Thanks so much for watching and as always, never stop making.